Hey guys, this is the tutorial for the pinky count. The pinky count is a utility card slide that allows you to get a break under any number of cards in a completely undetectable manner. Although it's difficult, it's a better alternative to the push off break or pulling up on the back of the deck with your thumb to get a break because it's a lot less detectable and it allows you to get a break under any number of cards whereas when you use the push off break or pulling up on the back of the deck with your thumb you are limited to the number of cards that you can get a break under. With that being said, I'll start off by showing you just a couple of ways that you can use the pinky count. Keep in mind that because it's just a move that allows you to get a pinky break, you can apply it to any trick that requires you to get a pinky break. So these are just a couple of the many ways that this move can be used. So for example, let's say that we have the four aces. And what I want to do is add on four cards to those four aces. So I can show you the four aces, square them up on the deck, and in that action, I have now added four cards to the four aces, and I got a break under those four cards by using the pinky count. Another example could be using really any kind of lift. Let's say you want to do a double lift. So I could do a double lift. You can even do, let's say, like a triple lift. Get my break to do a triple lift. Three cards there. Uh, I, a lot of times I'll use this move even to get a quadruple lift. So there is a quadruple lift. And you can go up to five or six cards. Not really that I can't really think of a trick that would require you to do a six card lift. But you get the idea that really you can accurate, you can do an accurate quadruple lift every time using the pinky count. So those are just a couple of ways that you can use it. But now let's get into the tutorial of how to, how to actually do the pinky count. Before I get into the actual mechanics, I advise that you use a flexible deck when you're first learning how to do the move. I'm using the Bee Stingers, which is probably the most flexible deck that I own. So if you have a deck of Bee Stingers, it's definitely great to start out with. But really, any deck with thin card stock or that's just generally flexible is going to make it a lot easier when you're first learning how to pinky count. So now on to the actual mechanics. The first thing you want to do is bevel the deck in the direction going away from your thumb on the hand that's holding the deck. So this is exaggerated, but it's just so you can get the idea that there's a slanted edge where your thumb is and there's a slanted edge where, the, where your pinky is. That slanted edge is going to make it a lot easier for you to pinky count cards individually. And that's the whole purpose, is to be able to count the cards accurately one at a time, rather than having them pop off in clumps with groups of two or three cards or four cards. Now, you don't actually have to twist the deck to get that bevel. If you have a deck that's perfectly squared up, you can pick it up, and just uh, by pushing away with your thumb like this, it'll actually create a natural bevel in the deck just by the way that you hold the cards. So you don't really have to do any sort of twisting action. You can just push you can just push like that and you can get that bevel that you need. Another thing that you need to make sure you do, it's it's a little thing but it's important is that the deck is squared up nice and tight. This will also make it easier for you to pinky count the cards one at a time rather than having them pop off in clumps. So it's a small thing but it is very important. Now the actual action of pinky counting is done like this. What you're going to do is apply pressure with your thumb, downward pressure with your thumb on one end and downward pressure with your pinky on the other end and then just let the cards pop off like this. And that is just the basic action of pinky counting. You're just applying pressure at opposite ends of the deck with your thumb and your pinky. Now one thing to keep in mind with the grip is this does just use your standard uh, mechanics grip and the only tension should be in the pinky and in the thumb. One thing that's going to make this really difficult for you is if you squeeze the deck too tightly. Now, I realize that this move does require a lot of hand strength and it does require a lot of tension, but that tension should only be in the pinky and the thumb since they're the ones applying the pressure at opposite ends of the deck and then allowing the cards to pop off. If you squeeze too tightly with your ring finger and your middle finger, it's going to make it much harder to pinky count, and I'll get into more detail about that later on in the tutorial. So just keep that in mind that while you should hold the deck firmly, it, that, that um, firm grip should only be in the pinky and in the thumb, and that's, all the te that's the only place where the tension should be. Your other three fingers should stay relaxed and loose and hold the deck gently. So just a quick recap. 
bevel the deck slightly, but you don't actually have to twist the deck. You can just use your thumb to push outwards and make sure everything's squared up because that makes it easier to pinky count the cards individually. And then the action of pinky counting is applying downward pressure with your thumb and downward pressure with your pinky at opposite ends of the deck. But remember that the only tension should be in the pinky and in the thumb. Your other three fingers should stay relaxed and loose. And that is just the basic action of the pinky count. But now I'm going to teach you some other nuances and subtleties that, make it, that are going to make it a lot easier for you to do the move. I just mentioned that if you apply too much pressure with your ring finger and your middle finger, it makes the pinky count a lot more difficult. Now I'm going to explain exactly why that is, and also how you can use your ring finger and your middle finger to slightly tweak your pinky count to your own personal liking. This is one of the biggest mistakes that I made when I was first learning how to pinky count. I thought I was doing all of the mechanics correctly, yet I still couldn't get the cards to actually pop up. And the reason is because I was squeezing the deck so tightly with my ring and middle fingers that it created a lot of downwards pressure. And that downwards pressure is working against the card that wants to pop up. It's creating a lot of resistance and it why, it's why it, it makes it so difficult for the card to physically pop up. Now even though you don't want to apply too much pressure, you also don't want to apply too little pressure. Because what happens if you don't apply really any pressure at all is the cards are going to pop up like this, and which is way too much, and then you're going to be able to see a visible break from the front of the deck, which is what you also don't want. So keep in mind that while you don't want to squeeze too tightly, you still need to have a little bit of pressure there to keep the cards from just popping up way too much. And the, all the pressure you need is just that slight bit that you would with your standard mechanics grip. I'll stress that a lot throughout the video because it's really important. The only large amount of tension should be applied with your pinky and your thumb because they're the only two fingers that are really involved in the count. That your other three fingers should just stay in their relaxed mechanics position grip. Now you still can uh, you can still use your ring finger and your middle finger though to slightly tweak around the move by either taking away pressure or adding a little pressure from the standard mechanics grip. And this will adjust how big your pinky break is. So my, so my pinky count, just with your regular mechanics grip, creates a break that's about that big. So that's my regular pinky count. But if I let up on the pressure, like this, so I'm pretty much letting, I'm almost completely letting go with my ring finger, the cards pop up a little higher. This might be hard to see on camera, but they are popping up just a little bit higher than they were with my standard pinky count. Whereas if you apply, downward, if you apply a lot of downwards pressure, so you're applying more pressure than the standard mechanics grip, the cards don't pop up as high. So now it just depends on if you want to get a slightly bigger pinky break or if you want to get a slightly smaller pinky break. It's completely optional, but I still would probably just recommend using just your standard mechanics grip uh, amount of pressure, so to speak, with your ring and middle finger. So with that being said, that is pretty much it for how to for the how to use your ring finger and middle finger in the pinky count. And now let's get into some other little nuances with the pinky count. Pinky positioning is a very important part in doing the pinky count correctly and it also makes it a lot easier. You want the tip of your pinky, which is the part right in there, to be level with the top card on the deck. So it should look like this. Let me get a nice close angle for you. It should look just like that. You'll notice that the tip of my pinky is level with the top card on the deck, which makes it a lot easier for me to let individual cards pop up. Now the reason you want the tip right at level with the top card is because it's that part of your pinky that's actually doing the count. So if the tip of your pinky isn't level with the top card on the deck, you're not going to be able to do the count correctly. So let's say that the tip of your pinky was over the deck like this. So basically, the part that's contacting the top card is halfway down your pinky. You can't do the pinky count. You can, you can apply all the pressure you want, but it's simply not possible to count because the tip of your pinky isn't contacting with the top card. And you also don't want to have it too low where you can't grip that top card and then your pinky count starts a several cards down. You of course want it to start with the top card. So that's one very important thing to keep in mind is that the tip of your pinky needs to be level with the top card since it's the part of your pinky that's actually doing the count. Now a couple other things on pinky positioning that are optional you can position your pinky on the deck really however you want to as long as the tip of the pinky is level with the top card. So for example, people with really big hands tend to do this. 
their pinky tends to be more on the corner of the deck like this, and then they pinky count. Whereas with mine, I'm pretty much in my standard uh, mechanics grip. My pinky is right about here on the deck, and I pinky count. Some people with smaller hands could pinky count even higher. Their pinky might be all the way up here on the deck, and then they pinky count. So that's something you can play around with, just see whatever's comfortable for you, whether you like being down on the actual corner of the on the actual corner of the deck like this just or if you want to be higher up you can just really move your pinky all over the deck and try pinky counting just see whatever works best for you that's one thing that's completely optional the only thing that's really important is that the tip of your pinky is level with the top card you can position your pinky however you want to as long as the tips level that is the only really important thing and that's pretty much it for pinky positioning now that I've taught you all of the mechanics and subtleties for the pinky count, I'll go over how you actually cover the move. If there is one downside to the pinky count, it's that there's noticeable tension in the pinky where it's counting the cards, and you can sort of see that top card pop up. It's not quite as noticeable with a Bee Stingers deck because of the border design, but if you look with a blue bicycle deck, it is a little more noticeable to see that top card pop up. Now that's a really small problem, and only people that are burning your hands are going to notice it. It's really more that tension in the pinky that you're worried about covering. But luckily, there are a bunch of different ways to shield that tension, and I'm just going to show you a few that I use most often. Just keep in mind that anything you can create that covers this corner of the deck where your pinky's counting the cards is going to work perfectly fine. So whatever ideas you can come up with, as long as it shields, your pinky in the corner of the deck where the counting is occurring, it will work just fine. So probably the one that I use most often, it's really easy, all you do is just turn your hand over. You're just going from palm up to palm down, pinky count your cards, and then come back. So let's say I want to pinky count four cards, I turn my hand over, pinky count four cards, then I come back, I now have my pinky break underneath four cards. You can also use a card or a packet of cards to shield this corner, another thing I like to do. So let's say that we have the four aces, and I want to add four cards onto those aces. Well, I could turn my wrist over, or I could pick up this packet, shield the corner while I pinky count those four cards, and then steal away those four cards and add them onto the aces. You can also and you can do this in multiple ways. You could fan out the cards to shield that corner, you could have them squared up. There's a bunch of different ways you can do it. Another thing you can do is let's say that we get a spectator to select a card and I want to control it into this. I want to put it into the second position in the deck, but I want to make the spectator think that I'm inserting it into the middle. I can say, okay, go ahead and memorize that card for me. I'm using their card to shield the corner while I pinky count one card. And then I can go ahead and say, okay, we're going to put that into the middle of the deck, and I really insert it into the break. And as far as they're concerned, it's in the middle. I now have it right where I need it to be, second position from the top. So that's another way that I like to use. And you don't even have to use cards or, or really anything like that to, um, or the hand that has the deck to shield the pinky count. You can use your other hand to shield it. So let's say that I gesture to a spectator, and I say, okay, go ahead and hold out your hand for me. And right when my hand covers that corner of the deck, I pinky count, let's say, three cards, and I have my break underneath three cards. So you see there's just a bunch of different ways you can cover the move. Another way you can cover the move, and this is really interesting, I actually discovered this on my own, is that I, I told you a couple minutes ago how you can sort of see that top card pop up. One thing I noticed, though, is that you can only see the top card pop up, which means that once that top card has already been counted, I can count as many cards as I want below it and you won't see a thing. So, for example, you can see that top card pop up, that's one. However, you don't realize that I just pinky counted seven cards, like seven cards total. I actually pinky counted six cards after the top card and you couldn't see them pop up. So I now have a pinky break underneath seven cards. And so I, I realize that so that's another thing you should uh, think about doing is if you need to pinky count a large number, you don't necessarily have to take a packet of cards and block that corner for like for block that corner for a long time while you pinky count 13 cards or something. And you don't have to keep your wrist like this for a couple of minutes while you pinky count a bunch of cards. 
all you have to do is cover that first card that you can see pop up and then you can keep pinky counting on and on and on below that top card and it will be completely covered. So that's a really useful thing that I discovered that I think you would like to use. And that's pretty much it for how to cover the pinky count. So now let's get into a couple things about actually counting, counting high numbers, and stuff like that. When you're first starting out with pinky counting, you probably won't be able to go past maybe five, six, seven cards, whereas I've been doing it for a few months now and I can pinky count about 20 or 25 cards. And this little technique that I just kind of discovered on my own, it's really simple, it's really easy, and it allows you to pinky count any number of cards. So it allows me to go past 20 or 25, it allows you to go past five, six, seven cards, or however many you can count when you're first starting out. And that's why it's so, so useful, and yet it's so simple and so easy. And here's the way it works. So I can, so let's say that I can only pinky count 20. So I'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then I can't go past 20. But yet I need to pinky count 30. What I'm going to do is grab the deck in my left hand, re and then grab the deck back in my right hand, and then keep counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I now have pinky counted 30 cards in a segment of 20 and then 10, even though I can't go past about 20 to 25 cards. The reason that you have a max limit of cards that you can count is because there's a point where the tip of your pinky isn't going to be level with the top card anymore. And I mentioned earlier how pinky positioning is important. What makes the pinky count easier is that the tip of your pinky is level with the top card. Eventually, after you've pinky counted a bunch of cards, it won't be level anymore, which makes it extremely difficult to run off individual cards. When it gets to that point, essentially what you're doing is grabbing the deck in your opposite hand, and then when you grab the deck again, you position your pinky so that the tip is level with the, with the what's not really the top card of the deck, but the top card that's below the break. So for example, let's say I can only go 10 cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then the tip of my pinky is no longer level. What I do is I grab the deck like this, and then I reposition it so that my pinky is level again. So now it's level with the card that's right below the break, and then I can keep counting. And this allows you to count any number of cards. You just have to do it in segments where you max out the number of cards that you can count. So even if you can only count three cards and you need to get a break under five, you could go one, two, three, grab the deck like this. This is just casual. You could just act like you're squaring it up or something, and then grab it again, and then count off two for your total of five cards. And remember what I said is you only need to cover that top card. So what you could do if you needed to pinky count five cards, but you're only capable of max, if you max out at three, you could somehow cover that top card. So now I pinky counted one, then go two, three, just do your casual little deck grab here. People do that all the time. Reposition and go four, five. And this really does allow you to pinky count any number of cards. You just have to do it in segments. And it's a really useful tool, especially when you're a beginner and you can't count to very high numbers. So that's just something you can use. But now, while we're on this, I'll get into this in a second, the subject of counting high numbers, how do you keep track of how many cards you've actually counted, and that's what I'll go into next. A few people have asked me about this, and I remember that it's something I also had trouble with when I first started pinky counting, and that's keeping track of how many cards you've counted, especially when you're dealing with a large number. And it's pretty tough because you're trying to focus on your patter, your presentation, and your interaction with the audience, and at the same time you're trying to keep track of how many cards you've counted. So, you know, it can be pretty difficult. So what I like to do is break it up into intervals. So let's say that I need to pinky count 10 cards. I might use some sort of cover to pinky count the first card, and that's all that I need to cover the rest of the cards, the, the other nine cards, and then I'll break it up into intervals of three. So I'll be pattering on, and then in between sentences, there's that slight pause for maybe a second or so, and that allows me to take my attention off of my patter and onto my pinky counting for just a moment, pinky count three cards, so now I have four, patter on some more, pause in between sentences, count off three more cards, we're now at seven, 
keep pattern, pause in between sentences, and count off my final three cards, and then I can finish my patter since I, and I don't have to worry about my pinky counting anymore. So what you're looking to do is pinky break up your pinky counts into intervals and also pinky count on offbeat moments where your attention isn't already focused on something else. You lose track of how many cards you've counted because you're trying to focus your attention on a bunch of different things all at once when you should be breaking them up. And it makes it so much easier. Look for those offbeat moments in between sentences or maybe when a spectator's talking. Or let's say you're having a spectator memorize a card. So you're saying, okay, go ahead and memorize that for me real quick. And then you hold it there for just a few seconds, let them memorize it, and in those few seconds you can go ahead and pinky count some cards since you don't have to worry about, uh, worry about your pattern. So that's just what you're looking to do is any moment that you can take, put all your attention on your pinky counting because it doesn't need to be on something else, that's what you're looking for. Also, if you lose track of how many cards you've counted, just start over. What you don't want to do is say, well, I think I've pinky counted eight cards, I need ten, count two more, and then you find out you've counted nine or eleven. If you have even the slightest doubt about how many cards you've already counted, just go right back to the beginning. If, you don't, if you're running out of things to say and running out of ways to create offbeat moments, just improvise some more patter or try and do a few things here and there in order to pinky count the proper number of cards. You can even do something casual like just clear your throat for a second. <clears throat> just clear, act like you're clearing your throat and of course you're not going to be talking while you're doing that and it allows you a couple of seconds to focus on pinky counting. So just you can improvise offbeat moments if you should lose track of how many cards you've counted. And also while I'm talking about that, if you accidentally count more than one card at once, like if you accidentally count a clump of cards instead of an individual card, and because of that, you lose track of how many cards you counted, also start over. That's one important thing. If you ever lose track, just start over. And that is pretty much it for that. So for my final thoughts on the pinky count, it is a difficult move that took me several months to get good at. So just keep practicing hard, and eventually you will get it down. You'll be able to pinky count a lot of cards very comfortably. Again, the main points, only apply pressure, a lot of pressure with your pinky and your thumb. That's important. Make sure the tip of your pinky is level with the top of the deck. And if you lose track of how many cards you've counted, just start over. And that's it for the pinky count. If you're confused about anything, as with all my other tutorials, you can ask me in the comments or send me a personal message, and I'll help you out. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.